Hi, I'm Auri Katarina and I deep clean dirty houses for free because I really love cleaning and I want to help people who are struggling. Today's house owner Mark was the sweetest boy ever. Mark was obliviously a man, but he was a little bit younger than me, so that's why I called him a boy. But that's not all. He was the sweetest boy ever. I was so touched when I heard Mark's story and how his home ended up in this condition. But I will tell you Mark's story later, because now I want to tell you how this mess has happened and how I start to clean house like this. This bathroom was so dirty delicious. There was so much grime and stains. And this kitchen, hmm, looks pretty good. There was a lot of trashes and dust and stains. And I really love those things. Because for me, the dirtier, the better. It's the best feeling ever when I see something really stained. It has been there for years, and then I come and I scrub it, scrape it, and wipe it off. It's the feeling you cannot buy. First, I'm gonna start cleaning the living room. I'm gonna collect all the trashes. Then I'm gonna clean the dirty couch and do some dusting. After that, let's move on to the bathroom. There is a lot of red mold in the shower, so I'm pretty excited to clean that. I'm gonna collect trashes, wash sinks, floors, shower, reorganize cabinets, do dusting and basically transform this apartment completely. I'm also going to tell you how these stains are created and facts about the red mold in the shower. Can't wait! Coming up in this video. Super satisfying cleaning and a lot of cleaning tips and tricks. First, let's collect all the trashes. I get a lot of questions how these people can take the trash out. I mean, it's really hard to understand how the trashes keep piling up. Imagine this. You are sitting on your couch and you eat something, like a chocolate bar. Then you throw the paper on your floor. Of course that's not normal and nobody wants to live in field. But when you are sick, you just don't care. It starts little by little. First you drop your first trash on the floor. Then there's five of them. You can pick them up later. Then there's 50 and then an overwhelming amount of them. Plus, there's a lot of stains and grime and you just can't clean them. Many of these depressed people feel like they are trash, so their home ended up looking like that. I don't mean that if you have a depression, your home will look like this, but it's possible. This is the kind of side of mental illness that no one talks about. These homes are hidden because the house owners are ashamed and they think they are the only one whose house looks like this. You don't see houses like this in newspaper, Instagram or anywhere. These homes are these people's secret nightmares. That's why I wanna film these houses and cleaning them so everybody all around the world can see and understand better that there is nothing to be ashamed of and it's okay to ask for help. It helps those who are struggling with their home and those who have difficulties to understand. It also gives hopes that even the messiest problem can be cleaned. If you wanna learn more cleaning tips and tricks, remember hit the subscribe button. First, I'm just wiping this table. And then, I see how many stains are there. 
a few so I used power paste for them. Now let's move on to this dirty delicious bathroom. You may wonder what is this grime? Well, mainly it's packaging and stains from human. So for example there is laundry liquid, human skin grease, package colors, many other liquids, dirt and dust. When you mix those things and then you let it sit there for a long time, it creates this kind of mess. And a little bit of water, of course, because then all these things are mashed up and then there's bacteria living and then it smells pretty bad. This yellow thing is so residue and human skin and grease. I believe that the shower drain has been clogged, so the water would just stand in the shower. The dirt has glued on the floor, layer by layer, year after year. That's why there was also red mold in the shower. Even though red mold is unslightly, the mold itself is usually harmless, if you are in a good health. Red mold is easy to wash off. Here I'm using grease remover and a scrub daddy. For the grout I'm using a steel daddy. Steel daddy is a stainless steel scouring pad that is thick and strong sponge. It scrubs grime away effectively. That's why if you have a dirty grout, you should use a hard tool like Steel Daddy. When I use Steel Daddy, I usually use only dish soap with it. Because the Steel Daddy is enough and you don't need a harsh chemicals with it. Let's clean this washing machine. You may have noticed that I use dish soap a lot, but it's so good product, like it can remove everything, almost everything. <laughs> and because I don't have a time to wait, that's why I'm scraping these stains off. And last, I'm using steel daddy because there was something really hard in there. And then I wipe it clean. Easy. At first I always start with an easier tool and see what it removes. Then if it doesn't remove everything, I'm changing my tool harder one. The order is like scrub mommy, then scrub daddy, then scraper and then steel daddy. Okay, let's remove this sticker. First I sprayed some glue remover, but I didn't wait long enough, so that's why I had to use a steel daddy. And scrub that off. If you have time, I recommend that you spray some glue remover and then you wait. <laughs> you just wait and then you can scrub it with scrub daddy. If you have sticker on your, for example, window, you can scrape it off right away. But if you want that to be softer, first you can spray some glue remover and then scrape it off. This thing isn't too bad, so that's why I think I'm gonna use dish soap. Yes, this spray bottle has some dish soap and water mixed together. And then I just scrub it. I'm always washing my sink with dish soap. This soap removes grease and soap residue effectively. Usually bathroom cleaners are acid-based products, so opposite of dish soap. It's good to change your products so they remove different kind of stains. But you can check what kind of product your sink and shower would need, just by touching them. If it feels sticky and greasy, use a dish soap. If it feels hard and dry, try acid-based products. 
if it feels slippery and shiny, keep going the same way. Ok, let's remove this lime scale. Here I'm using acid-based product and a steel daddy. If you have time, I recommend to use vinegar. Put the shower head in a pocket or plastic container and cover it with vinegar. Leave it to soak in the vinegar for at least 30 minutes and then scrub it with steel daddy. Ok, here's a great example. This shower feels like really sticky, so that's why I'm washing it with dish soap. More specifically, this shower had grease and lime scale on top of that. That's why I used a steel daddy really carefully, because it removes grease and lime scale effectively. Look at that beautiful shine. This shampoo rack looks beautiful. Really dirty. <laughs> and again I start washing it with dish soap. And dish soap and steel daddy did it again. It's clean. Let's try the same thing in here. Yep, it worked again. Sometimes people are afraid to use Steel Daddy, and I get it, it can scratch the surface. But if you have a lot of dirt, the Steel Daddy will remove the dirt first. But if you are scared, try it first in a small area so you will see. Let's reorganize and clean this bathroom clapinet so Mark is happy. You will see all of the before and after videos at the end of this video. So let's clean first and then look at the results. Woohoo! Let's move on to the kitchen and let's collect all the trashes. I always wash the sink first so it's nicer to wash the dishes in it. And again I start washing it with dish soap. You can do the same testing with your sink. Try is it sticky or hard slash dry. If your sink is sticky and greasy, try dish soap. If that doesn't help, try wash it with oven cleaner or dishwasher tablet. If the sink is hard and it has lime scale, Try using vinegar and let it soak there at least an hour. In this case, there was only grease and stickiness on this sink. That's why the dish soap and I add a little bit of oven cleaner and they worked really well together. And now it looks like new. Let's wash the dishes, like this. <laughs> okay, 
This stove is so badly burned that I can see that the dish soap won't do anything. That's why I'm using oven cleaner and I'm placing plastic wrap on top of it. This prevents oven cleaner from drying. Oven cleaner will melt all the stains off, so scrubbing is super easy. In this case I let it sit there over a night. Let it sit there over a night and then scrub it in the morning. I use a steel daddy because there is a little burnt mark still left, but that's okay. It's a huge difference if you use scrub daddy or a steel daddy. Because here the steel daddy won't scratch the surface, so it's really super safe to use. But scrub daddy would be a little bit too soft for these stains. For the finishing touch I'm using stove polisher. And look at that. It looks so beautiful. Let's remove these oven knobs so washing is easier. Again, this shop will do because this doesn't look too bad. But there was few hard spots, that's why I use steel daddy. If I have hard spots, I could also use oven cleaner and scrub mummy, so it's basically the same thing. But I decided to use steel daddy. Then I just wipe it clean and voila! This glass stove hood had grease and dust on top of it. That's why it looks grey. Sometimes the grease is really stuck in there, so I'll have to use oven cleaner. This time it wasn't that badly stained. Again, you can try your own glass and it should feel slippery and clean. Okay, okay. Black marks on your white cabinet. Not for long. Power paste is your answer. Look how easy. Power paste has a natural grit that goes really deep. And like that, it's white and clean again. Let's clean this table. It felt a little bit greasy, so that's why I need to wash it. Can you guess what I'm using? <laughs> yep. Would you want me to try different kind of products? Like, is that something you would want to see? Organizing time! I'm always saying that you should vacuum your cabinets first before wiping them. But I didn't have a vacuumer, so that's why I'm using this cool collecting technique. <laughs> When I reorganize cabinets, I try to think what are the most common used products. Those goes on the bottom shelf. Next, I'm gonna show you a cool tip how to clean your microwave. Easily. <laughs> Take a cup and fill it with water. 
and to simply put it in the microwave. Turn on the microwave and leave it cup there until it boils for a while. Two or five minutes is enough. Then remove the cup and wipe it clean. The steam from the water will soft stains, so it's easy to wipe them off. Many people like to add vinegar or lemon juice or whatever into that cup with water, so you can try different versions. But of course, the water is the most important thing there. Then I noticed that this microwave had a really sticky fingerprints and stains on its door, so that's why I'm using power paste. You may have noticed that I never use a vacuum, because vacuuming is so slow, and it isn't suitable for my efficient style. I use a floor squeaky for the floors. This is the same technique that professional cleaners use all the time. And lastly, I use squeaky with a microfiber cloth. Super handy. Now it's time to tell Mark's story. This story is a real survival story. Mark was born to a family with a lot of difficulties. His parents were alcoholic and Mark was abandoned as a child. He felt neglected and mistreated. Mark's parents couldn't take care of themselves, so they couldn't take care of Mark either. Mark ended up in foster care, and his whole childhood he was battling with hard emotions. It's hard to imagine your own parents just abandoning you. Mark felt worthless and tried to cover it up with alcohol. He started to do the same he had seen his parents do, and drowning his feelings away. Mark started to run out of money. So he had to start getting small loans. At the same time, the apartment started to fill up with trash. But that was the least of his worries. Soon, a hundred dollars loan was five thousand dollars. Mark took a new loan to pay for the old ones. Soon, the debt was ten thousand mm. dollars. After that, he no longer opened his pills. He didn't clean and the only thing that helped was alcohol. Soon the debt went up to $20,000. Debt, mental health and his home, they were all chaos and his home was the least of his worries. Until everything changed. Mark wanted a change and he wanted out. He set up a meeting at the bank and quit drinking. He went to therapy and wanted a job so that he could pay off his debt. Mark was only 24 years old. He wanted a better life. He wasn't fully recovered yet and a lot of his energy went into working. He decided to ask for help since he felt that a clean home would help him. When I heard his story, of course, I wanted to help him. Mark has done some mistakes, but it doesn't mean that you have to be a bad person your whole life. People can change, and Mark definitely did. I cleaned this home for two days, and it felt amazing. It was fun to clean, and Mark felt like such an amazing person. When he came home, he was in tears. He wasn't sure if the house was even his and came to hug me. As I said, he was the sweetest boy ever and I will remember him forever. It's okay if you have had difficulties in your life and you have done some mistakes. 
It's normal and I have done many mistakes too. In my opinion, it's more important what you have learned and where are you going now? What you want to be? That's the question you should be asking from yourself. I think Mark's answer is now clearer than it has been in a years. And that makes me happy as well. Next, let's see the before and after videos. They are stunning. Thank you for watching. Now I've got to go because the next dirty home is waiting for me. See you then. Bye bye.